I am an immortal walking through a porthole. Warp soul, colder than a North Pole. This is Mark Bell from Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. I am fired up. I am geeked out. I am ready to rock and roll at the March Madness meet here today. Um, but there are questions to answer for the Power Project Army, so let's get to it. Question number uno is about carb backloading. Uh, first of all, let me explain carb backloading shortly. Carbohydrate backloading is uh, refers to um, eating your carbohydrates pretty much anytime after about 5 or 6 p.m. You're going to work out, you're going to lift um, at uh, preferably around 3 or 4 or 5, somewhere in there, and then you're going to start to load up on your carbohydrates afterwards. During the day, it's going to be a ketogenic diet where the, the fat content is fairly high, the protein content is fairly high, and the carbohydrates are very, very low, trying to eat basically no carbs throughout the day. Um, and he, this guy's question is Cobra. His question is, uh, he wants to know, you know, is, am I backloading on my off days? First of all, to lose all the weight that I've lost and to get uh, ripped tan and vascular, I utilized Carb Night, which is a ketogenic diet that is a seven-day low-carb protocol. And on that seventh day, the last two meals, you're allowed to chew up some carbs. I since modified that as I was going through, as I started to lose 30, 40, and 50 pounds. I started to uh, make alterations to that, but basically uh, when my carb content is low, I'm able to stay pretty lean. Uh, when my carb content starts to go back up, I start to get pretty fat. So um, now that I'm leaner, it has gotten better. I can eat more carbs now, so things are a little differently. But to answer your question, no, I do not eat... I do not backload on days that I don't feel like I need to backload. I only backload, I gotta switch hands here, oh my hand cramp. Uh, I only backload on days that I feel um, that, I, that I need it. So currently what I'm doing is about three or four days a week uh, I'll eat more carbohydrates after a training session. I wouldn't even really call it backloading because now I'm front loading as well. So one of the reasons why I'm doing that, I'm eating carbohydrates kind of throughout the day is to, and this is on training days, one of the reasons why I'm doing that is because I feel that when you're trying to get stronger, um, and it, when you're talking about athletic performance period, no matter what it is, I do not think it's good to neglect any macronutrient, meaning carbs, fat, or protein. So with that in mind, I started to eat more carbohydrates even during the day. Right before I train, I don't like slug down a bunch of carbs because I think it can make it make you lethargic and slow you down a little bit, and maybe can even to a certain extent blunt your blunt, uh, maybe uh, prevent you from burning fat. So um, I don't even really know if that's true or not, but that's just something that's in my in my fat head. Um, but for example, if I train, let's say four or five o'clock, I will eat uh, breakfast, and that breakfast may have a pancake or oatmeal. Or something along those lines. I still try to follow the paleo protocol, so it'll be like a gluten-free uh, oatmeal or uh, some sort of rice-based hot cereal, something along those lines. So I've been doing that kind of stuff and had a lot of success with it. And the reason why I think it works uh, well for me and in, in getting the carbohydrates in before training sessions is that I think that your muscles need to be saturated uh, with nutrients and with and they need to be properly hydrated. And that's something that you don't really hear people talking about. But when you're on a low-carb diet, anytime you drink water, it basically goes in, in your mouth and out your weenus, right? It's going in and out pretty quickly. Um, and you're not really retaining, not really holding water uh, in the muscle bellies the way that you need to to get the pump and the, and the way that you need to to have better leverages for strength training. So a little bit of bloat, a little bit of puffiness is good while you're training. Uh, and so that's why I've been doing that on my... Uh, off days, I basically just don't eat any carbohydrates unless uh, I got to switch hands here again. I got my coffee in my hand today. That's the difference, the difference maker there. But uh, on my off days, excuse me, I'm having a heart attack here. On my off days, I um, don't normally eat a lot of carbohydrates. Normally, it's a keto style diet unless my body weight's in check. By the way, if you want to lose some weight. Weigh yourself every day. Make sure you're heading in the right direction, or at least every other day, something like that. I know people advise against it, say weigh yourself once a week, and that you shouldn't be losing weight, you know, necessarily every day. I disagree. I think you should be making progress every single day towards your goals. Uh, you will not always see a one-pound weight loss every single day. That would be absurd. But 
if you see a two pound increase, then you know that something's not uh, working in your favor, or you can, uh, you know, maybe you drank the night before, or maybe you ate too much salt, or whatever it might be, but at least you start to know why, and you start to learn how your body is responding to the foods that you're eating. So hopefully that clears up that question for you. Uh, carbohydrate backloading, in my opinion, is not a great diet in terms of uh, getting yourself lean when you're not already lean. It's not a great diet for getting yourself lean unless you're already lean. I said that twice <laughs> just to reiterate it to make sure you guys understand. If you're like above 10, if you're above like 12%, uh, carbohydrate backloading is probably not a great idea at this point for you. Start, you start to get yourself in a 12%, 10% range uh, and, and being fairly large as well so that way you have a lot of muscle mass on you. Uh, being in the, uh, when I say fairly large, I'll just, I'll, get, I'll give you a, uh, a blanket number between like 190 and 220. Um, if you're somewhere in that range and you're starting to approach uh, 10 or 12%, then you might want to start to think. If you're bigger, if you're like 260 and you're 10 or 12% body fat, obviously you're going to have more muscle. You're going to be able to chew up those carbohydrates a little bit better. Um, we had another question uh, about... If you can get any barbell, what barbell would it be? And uh, the guy didn't really mention anything about any other bars. That was just his question. And um, obviously, you'd say like a Texas power bar. You need a power bar, a multi-purpose bar. And that way, you can bench, squat, deadlift, rack, pull, uh, and do whatever the hell else you want with that particular barbell. Having said that, I think this guy probably means a specialty bar. If I had to choose between any specialty bar, I would look into a uh, a Cambridge bar. In my opinion, is a one of the better bars out there. You got a safety squat bar is great too. Uh, Cambered bar has some versatility in it and the fact that you can do good mornings with it um, and you can do all different styles of squats with it as well. Um, you can also do that with the, uh, with the safety squat bar as well. So I would try to pick between one of those two. Uh, if I had my choice, I would go with a Cambered bar. Um, just I just like that bar a little bit better and that's just my personal preference. Um, you may get a little bit more mileage out of the uh, safety squat bar though due to the fact that the safety squat bar works your mid to upper back and helps to try to prevent that caving over that happens when you're doing a, uh, a heavy deadlift or a heavy squat. Now let's talk a little bit here about the uh, March Madness meet that I'm about to participate in a little bit here. Drinking my coffee, getting myself ready to go, getting myself ready to rumble. We have Scott Mendelson's in the house. He is absolutely enormous. Weighed in at 340 pounds. He's huge. Um, he's huge. He's bloated. He looks ready to uh, to go after that record. Hopefully, he achieves it. If he does, he gets fifty five hundred dollars cash money right there on the spot from how much you bench dot net, the slingshot, and the only strength magazine in the world, thepowermagazine dot com. Not to be outdone is Stan the Rhino Efforting competing in a two hundred seventy five pound weight class. He looks jacked. He looks ready to go. He looks huge. Uh, he is ready to do a 2,300 pound total. His opener on a squat is 865 pounds. He's opening with about a 575 bench press and about a 775 deadlift. Not to be outdone is Brandon Old Bird Dog Lily, Lily Pad. Uh, he is uh, well prepared for this meet. I assume he's going to squat in the mid eights. Not sure what his openers are. Probably bench in the mid fives and maybe pull in the mid-8s as well. His deadlift is looking deadly, and uh, he looks ready to uh, chew the tires off a bus. He looks fired up, as always. So look for him to get in the mid-22s, and maybe even 23. Who knows? Uh, we also have Chad Wesley Smith. Never trust the guy with three names. Um, he is uh, probably going to squat over 900 pounds. Not sure was where his bench press is at, and he would probably pull close to 800 pounds, something like that. So we got some big, some big boys lifting at this meet. We we'll also have Max Aida. You guys remember the Karate Kid, the guy who threw that little weird. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can demo it. That weird Karate kick that he threw in that video. He went wheel. That and he uh, kind of hyperextended his knee. Threw that weird Karate kick. If you've never seen it, look it up. Type in Max Aida and Mark Bell, and you'll find it. And it's uh, Max Aida attempting a 705 squat, and it's just unbelievable. Anyway, he's competing as well. Jesse Burdick will be in the house. We got Ed Cohn. Jesse Burdick's not competing, but Jesse Burdick will be in the hizzy. We got Treston Show will be there, who you guys probably haven't seen in a long time because he's fat. 
And uh, we also have Ed Cohn being the head judge uh, for almost pretty much the entire meet. And uh, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. So I'm getting ready to go. I'm uh, going to start my benches out raw. 460 is the opener, and then go to 501 or 507, depending on what's there. And if I feel good, I might take one more jump and uh, try to go to about 520. Um, or I'll switch into my bench shirt try to knock Juan Laiha off our uh, record board. And then in the deadlift, probably going to start at about 710. That'll knock Mr. Robot Pants off, off of our record board. And, uh, and then go for about 750, 760, and then go to about 780. So hopefully it all works out. Strength is never a weakness, and that is it from supertraining.tv.